outside the SoFi Stadium. Arsenal beat Manchester United 2-1. There was some penalty shootout. That was pointless, but, you know, they get some practice in. We'll talk about all of that. The game, the 11, the moments, the subs, everything. And I even got to ask Mikel Arteta a question. Yay, little, little milestone moment, that. Um, but let's talk about the game. Let's talk about Arsenal beating Man United, getting their second win in a year here at SoFi after beating Barcelona 5-3. And Arteta and Arsenal gave us a lot to think about and a lot to consider in terms of what we're thinking about this team for next season. And it really comes in the form of Ethan Ranieri, who was once again a star in the game. Um, man of the match, I, I don't know, but you could easily have him there. He was just terrific. He was in central midfield playing in that left eight position and you saw with that equaliser by Jesus and Arsenal after go 1-0 down you saw ah uh, he's understanding what that position could mean could could need and what Arteta's maybe wanted it from it for a while even when we had Granit Xhaka um, but let's go back to the 11 so Hines starting goal in the absence of any goalkeeper he's basically playing every minute um, right back we had White Timber at centre back again with uh, Hayden no Aiden Heaven, sorry I should say, uh, Zinchenko left back, Jorginho and Ranieri, Erdegaard as the midfield three, Nelson on the right, Jesus and then Trossard was the front three. Smithrow didn't make the squad, that was big news and I think it essentially told us he's off people, he's off, the, the, the deal's pretty much done. Um, he's with the group because there's no point sending him until it is basically official um, but um, yeah it's a shame we've seen him play his last minutes for Arsenal and he wasn't in the match day squad but returning were Havertz on the bench Gabriel on the bench Gabriel Martinelli on the bench uh, I think that's pretty much it so it's good to see the squad a little bit more beefed up um, and hopefully we're going to see something that actually really looks something like an Arsenal first level apologies about the planes so far is not far from LAX I believe um, but we're going to have something that looks like a first 11 come Liverpool in Philadelphia. And of course, I'll be there with AFTV. Um, so with the, the first 20, 25 minutes, I've got to be completely honest. I thought Man United looked the better team. We started with a good intensity. We were playing. We were trying to, um, you know, we're trying to hassle Manchester United in some er errors. But actually, they, they looked pretty good. Yoro Maguire at the back, but you know, Yoro came off after 20, 30 minutes. Hoyland came off as well after he scored. And I think that did significantly weaken Man United. I think they lost, you know, two pretty big players, albeit young, but pretty, you know, two big signings at either end of the pitch. They had to make early subs and they have made a whole host of changes. I think, you know, all 11 players came off at half time, which is an interesting approach from Ten Hag. Did the same thing at MetLife last year. Um, so it's kind of hard to gauge what we were really up against in terms of Manchester United because a lot of players missing. I mean, Dallo, Bruno Fernandes, Maynou, um, who else at the back? Martinez, Luke Shaw, so many players missing. So Xerxes, loads missing. Um, but still some very good players out there. Uh, we had plenty of youngsters too that played. So I think it was just a good test and um, more a case of minutes in the legs and getting used to some intensity. Now, Hoyland does score the first goal. I've taken three and a half minutes to get to that bit. <laughs> I'll get better at these match reports, I hope. Um, Hoyland scores the first goal. The ball sort of kind of into the channel. And you're thinking, is it heaven or heaven? Let me know in the comments. Let's go with heaven. Heaven is a 17-year-old who, let's be honest, he gets done by Hoyland. Let's just call it what it is. He gets done by Hoyland, who is stronger, faster, and he finishes. I don't think Hein does, he yeah, covers himself in glory. He had a good game, but I don't think he covers himself in glory in that moment. Again, more playing, sorry. And um, the, ball, the ball goes over the top. And you've got, you've got heaven and you're thinking, just stand him up, just force him to play backwards. But he turns him, he rolls him, and he's running at goal and he finishes. And the most, uh, you look back at that goal in that moment and you realize it's a good thing because heaven bounced back from that and showed us what he's made of mentally. You know, that, that psychological steeliness, you're gonna need to play at a pro level and heaven showed he's got it. He then, throughout the game, was looking really composed in possession you know, twisting and turning in tight areas in our own penalty area because playing out the back is the way we do things. Then at half time, I'm sort of just catching up on what Twitter has to say. I've got people reminding me, actually, that's kind to of myself. It's not reminding me because I didn't even know this. 
I've got people telling me that Heaven's a number six. He's a defensive midfielder. But being left-footed and having a decent frame for 17 years old, they are playing him at centre-back. And my word, you wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think he wasn't a centre-back growing up. So it's so impressive to be playing in this stage, in this stadium, with pressure. Let's be honest, there is pressure. It's Arsenal United. I don't care if it's friendly. The fans here want to win. And you are playing in the first team. And Arteta demands a certain level, a certain standard. And he um, responded brilliantly. I wanted to talk about him a little bit there because I think he deserved it. rest of the game, Nuneri, I felt, was running a show. Odegaard wasn't near his absolute best, but he was good. Um, Jorginho did some really nice things. So it's quite a lightweight midfield, but it's not lightweight in terms of their intensity and the way they look to play at all times. The ball comes out to Zinchenko. Nuneri was making things happen. I mean, he was offside for a good effort that was saved by Onana. And then he was making things happen as the ball goes wide to Zinchenko, as Zinchenko finds the underlapping run of Nuneri. That is... That is out the Mikel Arteta playbook. He has, since, he, since being Arsenal manager, and you know it because you've seen David Silva and De Bruyne do it at Man City when Arteta was a coach owner of Pep Guardiola. That underlap when you've got wide wingers is cash money. It gives you, it's such a difficult run to track. It gives you such a brilliant area to then feed a striker. And Jesus, who's probably offside, gets on the end of the cut across from Ranieri and it's 1-1. Turns that offside. Were we lucky? Sure. But apparently Martinelli was onside for a ball over the top where he was waiting to bring the back of the net. So these things even themselves out. A lot of planes. Um, second half, we saw Kivior come on, who was brilliant. I actually thought he was really good. He came on at left centre back for heaven. And uh, Saladin came on from Ranieri. I thought Saladin was really good as well. Did really, really well. Um, She's got a real bite to him, real confidence on the ball. Plays with some real quality, real talent. Um, he's not the tallest, but he, he puts himself about and his technical quality cannot be questioned. thought he did really well with uh, Jorginho and Erdogan. I like the balance, I like the look of that three. I mean, I loved it with Nuneri there as well. Um, I should have said that Nelson was terrorising them in the first half. He continued to in the second half. Um, who else? Who are, oh, look at KG over there. Big up KG, he's a legend. Um, United view, everyone over there doing fan cam. So, where was I? Second half, um, made the changes, uh, made a few more. I mean, really, I think one of the takeaways for me was the youngsters. Marte came on, I think, with about half an hour to go. Havertz came on, Gabriel Magalhaes came on. And in terms of other youngsters, Josh Nichols, fair play. Now, I'm just going to say this here. I, I can say this now because I know how the sentence is going to end. I thought he actually struggled against uh, Bournemouth. Now, of course he did. He's 18 and he was up against Semenyo, who is a very powerful, very skillful, very tricky Premier League winger. And Josh Nichols, I think, was given a, a real workout. I'm not saying he did badly, but he was given a workout. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he was brilliant in this cameo against Man United. On the ball, composed, back to goal. He's not just going back to the keeper. He's turning inside and he's playing it forward. He's looking for that pass through the lines. One on one against Sancho, brilliant defending. Early, I think the first thing he did in the game was there was a ball that was coming to, I think, Sancho, and he just went and got him. Won the ball, clean, back for Arsenal, got us playing. Like, he, he set out to do his thing, and he did it. Good on him. Youngsters generally did. Lewis Skelly, a left back, was good. Not quite as impressive as Bournemouth, didn't have as much time, to be fair. He was good, though. I think that's pretty much it. But Martinelli is probably the player to end this match report on because Martinelli came on and reminded everyone what he is at his best. No, be, I think he was up against a youngster at right back for Man United, but he was terrorising them, running them every single time, causing them problems. Probably could have scored two or three today, just because of the positions he was getting himself, in, is himself into. Apologies, I'll hiccup in a bit there. Um, and then he uh, gets the goal, driving inside, rolls into the penalty area. People are scared to commit in case they give away a penalty. I do think they defended it quite poorly, Man United. But from the touchline, driving inside, then drills it under Onana. And I think a lot of people say Onana should do better, but there's a defender in front of him. He sees it late. Um, and as he's going down to get his right arm to it, you know, you know, he struck it really well with a you know, decent amount of power there, Martinelli. And, uh, you know, Arsenal two one up and ultimately win the game from that. So Havertz had a good, um, good chance as a cross from Martinelli. 
that Havertz was about to put in the back of the net, but I think Ericsson got a toe to it out for a corner. Um, so he, he was just terrorising them today. In fact, he probably was man of the match, actually. I think he probably was. Um, and were there other players to shout out? Yeah, Gabriel Jesus, of course. Of course, Gabriel Jesus. Um, because he played most of the game. I think he got 60, 70 minutes under his belt. And do you know what we saw from Jesus today was like that hunger, that fun. You know, he plays with that fun, the way he spun Maguire, some of the chopping and changing the moments he had. But more importantly, he got a goal. Like, that's what he'll want. Um, and it's really good to see Jesus in this kind of form. I don't think he's going to be Arsenal starting nine every week next season. But I think he's going to have an important part to play. And I think to play out on the right, on the left, get in different areas and just be a Swiss Army knife for Arteta, who can be used in so many different ways. I think he's an extremely exciting player. He looked fit and he looked ready to go and he looked ready and it was great. Shout out to the youngsters, they were superb. I think they were the story of the day, how well they all did, what they all showed mentally in this big stage, you know, SoFi Stadium against Man United in a game that Arteta would have wanted to win and taken seriously. Um, but Nwaniri is the guy that is getting every Arsenal fan talking and we keep thinking he might be saving us 30 million. If your options next season are Erdegaard and Vieira battling out, we know who's leading that. Jorginho Parte, and then Rice and Ranieri, and Ranieri gives you something else when maybe Rice sitting at the base. Maybe that midfield looks sorted already. Let's see. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, everyone. Um, hope you've enjoyed this match report. Arsenal were good. They were good today. Wasn't scintillating. Wasn't amazing. We're not hitting that first team level with kind of our regular starters because a lot of them aren't here like we were in Orlando a couple of years ago, like we did when we beat Barcelona here five, three a year ago. Um, but they're definitely looking sharp. They're definitely looking intense. They're looking raring to go. Now, we did end the day. I was with AFTV. Go check out all the vlog footage when that comes out. Um, we sort of saw some of the players are in good spirits walking past and Raniere shook hands with him. Cool guy. Um, yeah, they didn't say too much, but they were just... Lovely smiles on their faces, happy about the win. Martinelli buzzing, which was great to see. I asked Mikel Arteta about uh, Jiren Timber playing centre back and white right back. He gave a good answer. That will be out on AFT, so go check that out. Essentially, he was basically saying uh, whites are starting right back, so we don't want to make too many changes to the makeup of our back four. And then he said that um, as, as well, there's a less physical load on Timber playing centre, which was interesting. So, yeah, good to ask him a question, get that out there. Never done it before. Uh, thank you, Mikel, for a nice answer. Anyway, another plane. Probably time to end it there. Thank you all for tuning into it. I hope you've enjoyed the match report. Um, and I'll see you all very soon with another one from Philadelphia. See you then.